Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to teach you about how to make a height map train in Godot engine. Height map is an image which each pixel has information about height of the train. So brighter pixel means higher and darker pixel means lower. You can download height map from Google or you can also create height map from with Blender. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a height map with Blender and bring it to the Godot and create a train with that height map with collision shape. So let's do that. First, you need to create your train in Blender. You can create your train with a sculpting or geometry node. But I'm going to create a simple train with a Blender add-on for the purpose of this tutorial. Just go to the Edit, Preference, and in the add-on section, activate Landscape. After that, press Shift A and add a Landscape. I'm not worried about the Landscape setting, but you can change the Landscape setting as you want. So create a camera. Press N and set the position of the X and Y component of the camera to the 0 and the position of the Z to some number like 5. And set all the rotation component of the camera 0. Then put the camera in orthogonal mode and depend on the size of your landscape adjust orthogonal scale. In my case my landscape is 2x2 two two, so I would put my scale 2. Then set your resolution for the purpose of this tutorial I will put 1024 for X and Y but you can put a higher number resolution if you like next we need to create a material for our landscape to show how high each point of our train is so create a material and delete principal BSDF because we don't need that and then create a geometry node and separate X Y Z for position so we need only the Z component of the position and after that, create a math node and set that to the multiply and then connect this to the surface. So as you can see, as I change the multiply value, I get different result. What I want to do right now is that the bottom up point of my landscape should be zero and top point of my landscape should be one. So I put another math node and set the operation to greater than and put the value for the greater than one. So adjust the value of the multiply until all of the white go away and then just delete the greater than math node. So now everything is ready. Just render the image and save the image. I will save the image as EXR format because it is very good for height map. Now it is time to bring our train into Godot engine. So I use Godot 4 but you can get the same result with Godot 3. I create a new project and create a 3D scene, save it and create a mesh instance for our train and change the name of the node to train. In the mesh section, create a plane and subdivide that to a high number. I will subdivide it to 50 right now. You cannot see anything, but if you activate wireframe, you can see that our plane has been subdivided. After that, I will create a script for my train and I will create a static body 3D as a child of my train. I will add a collision shape 3D also as the child of the static body 3D. So in the script for our train, I will define some variable. The first one is the collision shape and the second one is the chunk size, which is my case is two. And the third one is the height ratio, which by default is one. And the last variable is the collision sh shape size ratio. For now, I put the collision shape size ratio to 0 0.1. So I will explain about all of this variable later. Before that, let's create a shader to create our mesh train. In the shader script, create a function which is called vertex. Normally, this function is called for each vertex in my plane. So, for example, if I increase the vertex height by 0.1, as you can see, all of the vertex Y position increased by 0.1. So now, in my shader script, I will declare two uniform. One of them is height map texture and other one is height map ratio. Now, in the shader parameters, I will load my height map, which I created in Blender and then I will increase the height of each vertex according to my height map texture and, and then I multiply that to height map ratio. So as you can see, as I change the height map ratio, my train is changing. So now we finish with the shader part 
and we are going to write the, some GD script. In our script, I will define function which is called update train, which take two parameters. The first one is the height map ratio, and the second one is the collision size ratio. And from here, I will change my shader parameter which I created earlier. Now it is time to run my game and see what's happening. But I notice that if I don't specify albedo in fragment function, I cannot visualize my train as I run my game. So I declare another texture uniform in my shader script, assign that to the albedo, and for the better visualization, I drag go that icon to that shader uniform. So now I can see my train, and as you can see, as I change my height ratio, my train also change. So now it's time to create a collision shape for our train. And for that, I will create two other variables. One of them is an image object, and one other is height map shape 3D object. So in my update train function, I will load the image and I will convert the image to a format FR. You should convert the image to this format because our image for each pixel has only one value. Of course, we don't want to create a collision shape with the size of our image because it will be too heavy. So we are going to reduce the image size by the factor which I declared before as a collision shape size ratio. After that, we are going to extract data for image. But please note, get data method in our image class will give us an array byte but we need to convert that to float 32 array because height map shape 3d only accept this kind of data okay so up to now we have a data which contain the number which this number show the height of each point in our train what we need to do now is to multiply each of these number with the height ratio, like we did this in our shader script. So iterate through all of the height data number and multiply each one with height ratio. So now it is time to create our shape from this data. First, we should specify the width and the height of our shape. Then assign our data to map data property of our shape. And at last, assign the shape to our collision shape, which is created earlier. So now I call update train function in ready function and let's run the game. So as you can see, we have problem. The size of the collision shape is not same as the size of our train. Actually, the size of the collision shape is determined by the map width and map depth, which is normally a big number. This number also determine how many points we have in our collision shape polygon. So I cannot find any way to change the size of the height map shape from itself. The only solution that I found is to change the scale of the collision shape node. But if you know a better way, please leave a comment. So first let's make sure that our mesh is in a correct size. So how much we should change the scale of the collision shape node? So I scale should be our chunk size divided by image width. My chunk has a quadratic shape, so I'm not worried about the width or height. And remember, you should change only the X and Z scale, but not Y scale. So now let's run again our game. As you can see, everything is working perfectly and my collision shape match my train. I hope you like this video. Till the next video, have a good time.